to honor all copyright restrictions, certain elements have been edited out of this message. Good evening. But yeah, I welcome you here to our Good Friday service. Thank you for being here. Thanks for being a part of this this evening. It's just uh, important for us to be together on this day. Creek thinks so too. But uh, it's important. Uh, the uh, you know, the um, tradition is that at 3 o'clock this afternoon, it is Jesus that gave up his life for us, uh, for the sake of our sin, for the sake of our brokenness, in order to set us right, in order to set us free, and in order to enable us to live life and life abundant. Today, the carpenter's hands were nailed to a cross. The king of kings was crowned with thorns and wore a purple robe of mockery. Today, Jesus set us free, himself imprisoned on a tree. Today is Good Friday. Today is God's Friday. And so we come in to worship God. Let us pray together. Holy and loving God, as we prepare to set aside our busyness and to focus intently on Jesus' suffering and death, we ask for eyes to see all the amazing things that Jesus' death means for understanding you, your love, and our salvation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Above all power
Let's pray together this evening. Great God, as we remember the events of the night that Jesus was betrayed and abandoned in Gethsemane, our hearts are filled with shame that we foolishly waste our time and make little progress in our Christian life from day to day. We lament that war flourishes and even grows more rampant. We lament that injustices feel like the norm. Forgive our cruel indifference and teach us again the good news of forgiveness. Allow us to live anew in your love and bring forth the day when all will be made new. Amen. Watch the Lamb. Awful good advice. Not just for today, but especially for today. Watching the Lamb is kind of the goal of our whole lives, isn't it? Watch what the Lamb does as he gathered with his disciples. We're rewinding the story a little bit. Good Friday is the day when we celebrate the death of Jesus, but there was a night before, the night before when Jesus is trying once again to prepare his disciples for what's about to happen, that it's actually going to happen. Despite their disbelief at Jesus' words, what Jesus, came, what Jesus said is what had come to pass. Matthew chapter 26 begins with these words. When Jesus, the Lamb, had finished saying all these things, he said to his disciples, You know that after two days of the Passover is coming, and the Son of Man will be handed over to be crucified. Jesus continued teaching. Jesus and the disciples retreated from Jerusalem to a town called Bethany. And then they entered Jerusalem once again, upper, entered an upper room to celebrate the Passover meal together. But during the course of the meal, watch the Lamb. Because the Lamb, Jesus, took a common element of that table, a loaf of bread. And he said to his disciples and all who had gathered there, This is my body. And he took the loaf and tore it into two and said, broken for you. I often hear an implicit challenge of Jesus' words. Do you get it yet? This is my body, broken for you. Take and eat and remember me. And as if that wasn't enough to make the disciples finally get it. Jesus took the cup, passed it among them, and said to them, Drink from this, all of you, for this is the blood of the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, and remember me. The disciples and Jesus ate and drank and try as they may, the disciples, I don't think, still understood. And Jesus said to his disciples that we're going to do this again someday in the fullest expression of my Father's kingdom. But not until then. Then the disciples and Jesus sang a hymn, and they left that upper room for the Garden of Gethsemane. And from the Garden of Gethsemane, the betrayal. Judas Roman soldiers arrive, and Jesus, the Lamb, is taken away, sentenced to death, refused pardon, even by the crowds. And then just as he said his body was broken and his blood poured out to establish a new way of life, a new world order, if you will. A new world where life is abundant. Through the death of Jesus, the world changed. 
And as a reminder of that, we've been given these gifts of bread and cup so that we can bring change forth into the world. As we prepare to, to, to partake of these elements, let us pray together. Holy God, through your Son, pour out your Spirit upon us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make these gifts be for us the body and blood of Christ so that we can grasp the message and so that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, O oh God, make us one one with your Son in giving our lives for his sake, one with you and one with all who partake of this meal so that the world may know of the power of your life-giving and life-changing love made known in Jesus. Amen. Would those that are helping uh, please come forward at this time. As you come this morning, this evening, I invite you to uh, just remember that uh, the center aisle has been left with uh, remember, rem reminders of Jerusalem, uh, reminders of Palm Sunday, the day that the crowds recognized who Jesus was before they soured on him. So step carefully, but just, you know, know that you're invited to come down the center aisle, return to your seats by the side aisle, and just uh, partake of this meal and uh, know Jesus' love for you, made known through his death and made known through his life. Let us come now for the table of Christ is prepared for the people of Christ.
stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lust. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross Till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross And exchange it someday Let's pray together. We praise you, gracious God, for you have created heaven and earth and all that is before us. You made us in your image and made covenant with us even when we fell into sin. We give you thanks for Jesus Christ, our Lord, who became the true Passover lamb that was sacrificed for our salvation. In his name, we join our voices. Amen. Tonight, we will hear a drama of those who interacted with Jesus on those final days. Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of Jesus, the thief on the cross, a Roman centurion, and John the beloved disciple who was with Jesus on the cross. Let us find ourselves in their reflections and cling to the cross of Christ throughout these holy days. When Jesus was crucified, most of his friends and disciples abandoned him. Only a few people were there to witness the last hours of his life. As they gazed upon Jesus in those final moments, what did they see? What thoughts and feelings must have weighed upon their hearts? He, he had called me and I followed him. Last night, I leaned my head against his shoulder and listened to his words, words that came from God. His words always spoke of the love of the one who sent him, but he wouldn't speak to those who accused him. There were no words of hatred or revenge. He spoke the words of God, and now those words are being silenced by the violence of men. The word of God is still silenced by violence and cruelty. The word of God is still is stifled by fear and embarrassment. For the times when we have stood by and allowed the word to be suppressed and silenced, let us ask the Father's forgiveness. He called my name, and he loved me. His touch brought me back to life. To touch him now would only make his agony worse. I cannot say goodbye. They have wrenched him away from me and nailed him, nailed him, nailed him to a tree. 
My heart breaks with the pain of such a parting from the one I love. Those who love are still wrenched apart by cruel hands. There is no chance to say goodbye. There is no way to ease the pain of parting. For the times we have been immune to the pain of others, ignored the cries of those in an agony of separation, we ask the Father's forgiveness. A sword shall pierce my heart. Where did those words come from, echoing round and round in my head? A sword shall pierce my heart. Yet the Almighty has done great things for me. I do not understand. My spirit rejoiced in God, my Savior, for he looked on my lowliness and raised me up. Now my son, the promised one, is raised up. He cries out in agony and abandonment, My God, my God, why have you forgotten me? O oh God, our God, why have you forgotten us? People still stand at the foot of the cross, sharing the agony of those they love, witnessing the anguish of abandonment by those who could make a difference, the people with power and authority. They wonder, where has God gone? For the times when we have allowed people to be abandoned to evil forces, when we have failed to act or speak on their behalf, we ask the Father's forgiveness. I hurt. Nails through my hands and feet, death, come quickly. The one they call Jesus, he doesn't deserve this. It ends here. No hope. I don't want to die. I don't want to be lost forever. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. To lose hope is the worst agony. To be afraid of oblivion, part of the human condition. To call on the name of Jesus is a sign of hope and despair. For the times when we have lost hope and given away to fear, falling and failing, to call on the name of Jesus, we ask the Father's forgiveness. It's just a job. Not the best sort, but part of the job is keeping order. We can't have people going around preaching revolution. If they won't keep quiet, then the law has to take its course. My job is to make sure that it's done efficiently. This one's different, though. I'm not sure how. Not many of them ask God to forgive us. It makes you think. It was when he did that. Asked his father to forgive us. This one's different. Maybe he really is the son of God. God so loved the world that he gave his only son 
so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. For God sent the Son into the world, not to condemn the world, but so that through him the world might be saved. The Word became flesh and lived among us. But the world, though it had it to had its being through him, did not recognize him. But to, to all those who do recognize him, he gives the power to be children of God. The word of God is alive and well in Bibles, songs, and prayers. In, in the face of bitter persecution, persecution or the world's apathy, Christians still find ways to hear and live the word of God. The word cannot be silenced. Blessed be the Lamb of God. I will not leave him. I will hear him call my name forever. We will walk again in a garden, he and I. We will walk and never be parted. Soon, and very soon, children will be returned to the arms of their parents. The loved and lost will be reunited. Soon, and very soon, the forgotten prisoner will receive a letter and know that someone knows his name. Soon, and very soon, the pain of parting will give way to radiance of joy in reunion. Blessed be the Lamb of God. My beloved son, whom I loved as only a mother can love, walking alongside him through the valley of the shadow of death, so that he should know that he was not alone. Only one who has suffered can walk alongside those who suffer. Only one who has known the anguish of seeing the suffering and dying of a loved one can understand the depths of pain and grief. One woman, gentle and humble in heart, walks eternally alongside her suffering children until the day they are reunited in the city of God, the new Jerusalem, lit by the light from the throne of the Lamb. Blessed be the Lamb of God. He promised that I would be with him in paradise. I was a waste, a failure, the scum of the earth. Yet he didn't turn me away. Lots of people thought he was a failure too, that he was scum too. They were wrong though. And some of them, They'll never even realize just how wrong. Jesus came into the world, not to condemn the world, but to save it. He was despised and rejected, and he shared the lot of the poor and the wretched. But his humility... His obedience, even to accepting death, even death on a cross, means that God has raised him high and given him the name which is above all other names, so that all beings in the heavens, on earth, and in the underworld should bend the knee at the name of Jesus, and that every tongue should acclaim Jesus Christ is Lord. Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels 
surrounding the throne and the living creatures and the elders. They numbered myriads of myriads and thousands and thousands, singing with full voice. Worthy is the lamb that was slaughtered to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea, all that is in them singing to the one seated on the throne and to the lamb, blessing, be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. Amen. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Friends, you know the whole story of Jesus and his love. You know the old story of God coming to live among humankind. You experience divine presence on dark days and in sunlight. 
Remember well the king upon his cross. He who did not despise your weakness shall never leave you or forsake you.